Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, so the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs Enigma podcast. I sound surprised when I say another. No, it's another edition of the Entrepreneurs Enigma podcast. I'm your host, as always, Seth. To me, today, I have Teresa Intag. She is of Intag Hire, a fractional human res- resource and recruiting firm, as well as the co founder of. Tag for HR, a membership platform to support HR leaders in small businesses. So that's really cool because, you know, a lot of times they can't hire the company per se, but they need help. So you're like, well, I can, I can support you over here. It's, that's smart. I like that idea. Um, she's worked with amazing brands such as Samsung, Bizarre Voice, Nordstrom's, Yeti Coolers. I have my Yeti mug right here for those who are on video. Yeti. Nice. Gotta love a Yeti. I don't get the whole idea of Stanley's. They're, they're kind of dorky looking. I don't really like the Stanley <laughs> one. But, you know, whatever. It's each their own. And a lot of others out there. Um, you you know, you value innovation and flexibility for life's challenges, which, you know, happens to all of us. We get colds and all that. And life, kids, everything just kind of happens. So it's nice to have your own kind of thing going on. So, Teresa, how's it going? Hi, Seth. How are you? Not too bad. Where are you calling in from? I'm from Austin, Texas. Oh, so it's nice and warm and humid down there right now. It's yes, right now it is starting to warm up a bit. Yeah, it's it, it was warm in. We're recording this mid-April, and this is going to come out later, so it's kind of dating it, but whatever. It was like in the 70s here in Philly, and now it's like 50. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna get so sick. I'm gonna get come so sick. Austin, in Austin. We'll, we'll Austin's like a, and Austin's a fun town. It's like this little bastion of weirdness in, in all of Texas. I love it. It's a great place. So anyhow, so Teresa, how did you find your way into HR and especially entrepreneurship? Did you do the corporate grind for a while there? I did. Yeah, I spent probably most of my career actually working in recruiting, managing recruiting, then managing human resources, doing the evolution. And I worked for both large companies like Samsung, but then also Ooh. a lot yeah. of uh, tech companies um, that were well, startups. That's a whole different ball game, yeah. Whole different ball game, yes. So I've gotten different perspectives, but mm-hmm. across the board, most companies were inefficient with their human resources and recruiting. They spent way too much money on the wrong things. Um, mm. So I saw there was an opportunity to do it better and Ooh. to create a flexible model that could actually be plug and play for those smaller to mid- mid-sized oh, businesses. Plug and play is always good, yeah. Yes, and that helps with their different, you know, changes in, in growth. Sometimes, you know, they're growing. Sometimes they've got to really be careful of budgets. So it's really flexible mm-hmm. and supportive, but has experts so that you're not just getting these low-end junior people. Um, oh, yeah. And, and that was where I started to test the model. And that was just seven years ago. I'm, I'm 54 wow. now. I'm dating myself. But um, that, so it was late in my career that I took the leap to become an entrepreneur. Um, it's never, never too late to become an entrepreneur. It is never too late. And, and I had... I love watching businesses and watching how they grow. I love being around startups and innovation. Mm -hmm. But I had no idea that my love for that was because I really wanted to be an entrepreneur. And it took me a while to get there. And now I'm like, I can't go back. This is is my arena. No. Exactly. And so you've worked for, so you've done like the corporate grind in big companies and small companies and, you know, tech companies that are just weird all around. We're going to take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show. Exactly. And Lots of challenges. You know, like, I'm sure it was every every one was a different challenge. You know, being in Samsung, where it's like, you know, half the company's in Korea. Right. Like that's guy. That's a multinational company. Multi internet. Multinational. Multinational. Yeah. Yeah. I think the term is multinational. Ah, yeah. who knows? It was about multi international, but it can only be international once. It can't be multi internet. Yeah, it has to be multinational. All right. Well, hey, it's vocabulary with Seth today. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so so you you had like the multinational, you've had like the state side, you've had the technology. Which one did you prefer when oh, you were startup, in tech startups? Uh, they're fun and scrappy. They're yeah. so fun and scrappy, and I I'm I'm good at that. I love that. So that's and you're also doing. you're in a tech center because Austin's very much a tech center. So yes. But now job. being a fractional, what's the benefit of being a fractional? I guess because you get to do more 
bit, bit, bit more variety, I guess. Correct. Yes, I get to work with all kinds of tech, mm -hmm. software, innovative, climate-oriented companies, um, and and I love to see kind of the latest and greatest technologies or what's Ooh, happening out there. Yeah. So it so it's really fun on both sides. And, and being in HR, you kind of get to hear more of the inside business. I understand how businesses need to be run. So yeah. I love to hear kind of the challenges they have, strategies around that, mm -hmm. um, the the funding they have, and, and the whole walk of the journey of tech startups. Yeah, so why, so why HR? Like, how did you find your way into HR in general? Yeah, I think, you know, sometimes our careers find us instead of us really going to careers. And, you know, when, when I was in high school, recruiting wasn't a thing, really. Um, yeah. So I kind of fell I don't into, think it is any – still, I think people fall into recruiting. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's, you know, I did a little sales early on. I, I, I jumped into recruiting. I also did ran a nonprofit for six years, so that was Ooh. around training. So you've, um, done a, you've done a lot of different industries. I have, and I like variety. I like, And I have, from that, though, multiple perspectives of things. And yeah. it helps me to really understand how, you know, different companies need different resources or, yeah. you know, have different journeys that they're on. Um, so I can accommodate that. And I love that. I love, you know, I just really love learning how different businesses are run and what makes them tick and, and what what support needs to be built to help them thrive because it's mm -hmm. easy to fuck up a business. I mean, it's oh, really easy to go under. And so it's it's easier to do that than succeed, honestly. Yes. Yes. There's so many little nuances that you got to be aware of and walk through mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, taxes and, you know, Oh, don't get me started flow. on taxes. Like, oh, another another thing dating us, we just, it was, it yeah. was April 15th. Recently yes. in the U.S. and yes. well, always tax always day stressful yeah always stressful oh but, my god it hits and it's like before you know you blank here taxes are done you blank and it's like yes. taxes again I'm like what and it's painful it's so painful and it's, but it's it's a fact of life exactly so right yes so so we get like all of that from the HR how to align HR yeah. with the business strategy as opposed mm. to being the old fashioned HR which is you know the police so to speak yeah. um, that's not how we operate we operate strategically and we operate you know really really knowing like what compliance you need to watch out for what are <sighs> nice to haves and you know and what really works well for a company of that size so that it's not too crazy it's not bogging down the business um, it's streamlining things so so you do a, so you 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 come in fractionally you know mm -hmm. you come in you whip everyone into shape. You get things lined up. Compliance, like, oh, you have three employees. Ugh. Or you have the first. It's always I always hear it's the first employee. It's the toughest. Getting like all, uh, everything lined up for that first yeah. employee. Yeah. And then after that, the th I think another thing is like what three or four or five. One of those that mm -hmm. is like, oh my god, there's more headache at that point. Like, yes. you have a little bit of a respite between like three and five, and then five happens, and it's like now you got even more compliance and more stuff to deal with. Oh, I, think, uh, I think the biggest challenge, too, is a lot of business owners don't realize that when you're a company with one employee and then you go to five employees, your business kind of changes. So what you thought you were going to need or you, what worked before isn't necessarily mm -hmm. going to work as you grow. And it, yeah. it changes fast. And it could be even like three months, six months that you have to shift mm -hmm. your model a bit. And if you don't kind of stay agile and shift, it um, can bog you down and actually slow the business down quite a bit. Yeah, honestly, and then with the government, well, I'm not even sure what's going on with that rule, but it's like, you know, if you're a small business, you're going to have to tell them about something or other. I forget what it is. I mean, but like that whole small business, like you're not embezzling, you're not funding war yes. or terrorism. That yeah, one. Yeah. That's just like, what the heck? I mean, that's so ridiculous. And you have uh, to be I'm sure not sure if you have to, to do it yet. I, I know you if you're being. You have to do it before the end of the year. Um, if you're if you've been in business longer, if you, I think if you're just starting, you have to do it right away. I know I have to do it before the end of the year. Yeah, I think and so I've been around do, yeah. for seven years. Um, I've been around for sixteen. I'm like I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Right. I keep emailing my wife. I'm like, uh, hun, I think we got to deal with this at some point. Yeah, but yeah. I, I my accountant said just reach out to LegalZoom and they do it for you know a little fee and it's done. But yeah, it's it a, it's, a, it's a form that you fill out saying like right. we're not we're not embezzling. Right. We're not we're not evil. We're not Sam Bankman <laughs> Freed. You know, we're not any of this stuff. So, you know. Uh, another thing to like mm -hmm. to to make it difficult for small businesses to survive. It's crazy. Like yeah. it's, and, uh, and like it's, it's these rules and it's like I get why some of them are there, but like some of them are like this one I looked at it, I'm like, "Really? We've been doing just fine without it." Right. Exactly. But just whatever. Go after the so, all right, so you've done the corporate. The you've done the Exactly. You've done the big corporate, the multinational corporate. Right. You've done the national corporate. You've done the small business. You've done the tech. You've done this. You've done that. You've done the nonprofit. You've been all over the place. 
Yeah. What is the best thing about being an entrepreneur, though? Freedom. Versus uh, all that variety that you went through. <laughs> yeah, I, I, freedom. Uh, freedom to, you know, with freedom comes a lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. but, uh, the freedom, the flexibility, the you you get to design things. You get to trust your gut more and no one's mm -hmm. stopping you. That's yeah. what I love. Um, trust it, your you gut. You really get to kind of expand in a way that you never thought you'd be allowed to expand in your yeah. lifetime. On your terms, too. Yes. Yeah. And, you sc and if you screw up, it's on your terms. <laughs> Right, exactly. But it's yeah. all on you, which is a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, on, on the flip side, what keeps you up at night as an entrepreneur? Yeah, uh, cash flow, revenue, you know, this Exactly, all that stuff yeah. keeps you up. It's just it's like, oh, man, I got to get another deal this week. Oh, my God. Right. Uh, all that stuff. And that's a technical term. Uh, it's a technical term. <laughs> but we all feel it. You know, it's one of those things like you sit there and you're like, all right, all the good things are also a headache. Mm -hmm. Like freedom, yeah. to you know, set your own schedule. Well, you really don't set your own schedule. <laughs> you, you go really from one to, boss to like 16, 20, 30 bosses. It's like it's. Right. You really have to love it, I think. You've really got to have that um, desire for it or almost obsession with it. Um, to, yeah. To keep you going through. And, it, and it's nothing it's wrong if you try and you, and you say, this is not for me, and you, you go back to corporate. I mean, I found a lot of people say, like, they like hiring out former entrepreneurs because they think differently. Yes. I also hear people saying, I will never hire an entrepreneur because they think differently. Well, that's the company you don't want to work for because they don't think differently. And we're not, and I'm, please, Apple, don't send me a cease and desist for saying that. <laughs> well, I think, you know, if you're a company that, is, that honors innovation, your mm -hmm. entrepreneurs are going to think outside of the box 100%. Exactly. And that's kind of key. Be, go from entrepreneur to intrapreneur or go from intrapreneur to ex, extrapreneur. I always say extrapreneur. Entrepreneur. It should be extrapreneur, honestly. But anyhow. Yeah, so um, what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? You know, I think what's the most important is building a support network. Mm, yes. Like, it's hard. It's a hard journey being an entrepreneur or a business owner and, and doing all the different things, wearing all the different hats. And you cannot know it all. And yeah. that support group, one, emotionally, like people that are going to cheer you on, and two, yeah. um, you know, knowledgeable experts that you can tap into. That's a really big deal. And is that sort of what you're doing with your your – I was going to say club, membership platform with your club, your um, HR club. <laughs> no, that is, I would say, more about um, watching human resources, uh, the departments and the people, the individuals really go through hell over the last couple of years. Um, yeah. And, and get burnt out and undervalued. And so we, my partner and I decided to create this environment of supporting mm -hmm. them uh, because life's already hard i mean that's oh. kind of why i'm pro flexibility i've gone through shit everybody yeah. goes through stuff and sorry if i um ah, we've already got the explicit tag it's fine go for it <laughs> the, it's real though life gets real it at is. times and then to add that kind of complexity and negativity mm -hmm. on top of your role we wanted to really provide hr people with tools so that they can thrive better because they're not always business savvy and, and they also get they also get a lot of shit from people too like oh it's hr do. it's they hr do. it's like no but hr can be good they can be your friend they can help you figure stuff out totally yes and and there's really some fantastic wonderful human resource people that get overlooked um and they don't cheer for themselves so people don't realize all the mm -hmm. things that they're doing in the background um so th that's it's, why it's we a tough career to, path i yeah, think it, yeah. what is it it's the least liked people in jobs are journalists, politicians, and I think HR. That's like one I of those. I would not be surprised. Yes, absolutely. And I'm like, and some of it's warranted. I mean, some of it's warranted. Oh. I mean, it's, it's totally warranted for politicians. Oh, man. Right. <laughs> but I mean, journalists, I mean, some of them, some of them are real sleaze bags. I mean, I'm a former journalist, and like, you know, I, I don't think I was a sleaze bag as a journalist, but there was definitely some times when I was like, you know, I can see why people don't necessarily like journalists. <laughs> and, and HR, you know, it's, you, you, when you interact with HR, it's when there's a problem. And that's what people have to adjust to saying is HR is not just when there's a problem. It's when you need help figuring out your benefits. You need help figuring this out. You know, if there's, you know, maternity leave to deal with and stuff, you know, it's like HR can be your friend. Absolutely. And HR is changing. 
human yeah. resources evolving. There's a there's more modern approaches to it. The old traditional approach doesn't really work in today's business world. Most um, traditional approaches don't. <laughs> yeah. So so that's kind of you know putting HR in a different light. I think is really yes. important right now too because they're doing different things than they used yeah. to. Um, it's more dynamic. And, and yeah, it's, it, it's incredible. For the company. It is, and I think that I think a lot of small businesses think, oh, we don't need HR because we're so small. You might not need an HR department. Correct. You might want to talk to Teresa. You might want to talk to a um, <laughs> fractional HR company to at least figure out, I mean, payroll at least. I mean, nothing's worse than writing, trying to remember, remember trying to remember how to write a check. Like More I have to do that resources. pay myself, and it's t- I have to remember how to write a check every once in a while. I'm like, how do I do this? <laughs> But it's also important, like, as you just grow a little bit, what resources can you tap into mm-hmm. that you can outsource pieces so it's not taking up your time as a business owner? And and yeah. that's, like, where we get strategic with our clients of here's different areas, not us even. Like, we, we work ourselves out of a job. Here's different areas of how you can do parts of your human resources and be smarter mm-hmm. about it and get the ROI on it that you need. Mm-hmm. and And then – you can use us to validate things or to see yeah. what we're seeing in the market. And so you don't need us a lot. It's just every once in a while. Yeah, and it's hence the fractional. You don't need an HR person all, all, all in. Exactly. But being you need an advisor almost kind of exactly. thing. Exactly. HR advisor. I think that's yeah. a good way. So, Teresa, where can people find you online? Where do you hang out the most? Yes, I think the most is on LinkedIn. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, my last name, I-N-T-A-G, is unique. Uh, there's only a few it's of us in America. <laughs> but Teresa has an I in it before but the yeah, A. Teresa has an I in it. Yeah, but the yeah. last name was, you know, it's very unique. Got yeah. that. But then you, then your parents had to kind of throw you a curveball and give you an I before the A. That's right. That's right. So, yeah, and in tag hire or tag for HR are the two companies um, that I help run. So those, you know, you can look those up as well. And we often have free resources uh, for companies to tap mm-hmm. into. Awesome. Well, Teresa, thank you so much for being on. This has been so much fun. I've learned a lot. You know, it's, it's nice also to commiserate and bitch and moan about, you know, how, like, corporate, ugh, ugh. Yeah. I could never go back to corporate. I've, I've thought about it. I worked for Merck for a little while there. I enjoyed it. But then, you know, HR calls, and you're like, oh, crap. Right. <laughs> and back then it was like, you know, it was in the, it, back when we were trying to figure out, what was it? It was trying to figure out how to do fair and balance for pharma in Twitter. Oh, wow. If, when it was 140 characters. You can't. No. There's no way. You no. can't link out. It has to be in the message. And it's like, yeah, I can't do it. That was fun. That was always yeah. a fun time. So, Teresa, well, thanks for being on. It's been so great. Thank you, Seth. It was great to meet you. That was a great show. If you're enjoying Entrepreneurs Enigma, please review us in the podcast directory of your choice. Every review helps other podcast listeners find our show. If you're looking for other podcasts in the marketing space, look no further than the Marketing Podcast Network at marketingpodcasts.net. Goldstein Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode.